Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name's Tristan Mortlock and this is Captain's Vlog. As the title suggests, we're gonna be doing a full tour here in the engine room. I'm gonna to explain to you what all the components are and what it is that they what they do and what their job is basically. So we're gonna start from the port side and work our way all the way around and um, just give you a better idea of how uh, a super yacht runs from the engineering point of view. So we'll start just a short interruption, guys, to tell you about today's sponsor, Absolute Magnitude. Now, Absolute Magnitude, they supply paint and gel coat polish products, stainless steel polish and protection, eco-friendly teak cleaning and treatment, dry ice cleaning, anti-fouling, and ultra pure water cleaning technology. Now I can vouch for AM because we on board Motor Your AWOL have been using them for many, many years and all their products are fantastic and we have nothing but good things to say about them. So go and check them out at www.absolute-magnitude.com or send them an email at info at absolute-magnitude.com. So we'll start over the port side. So here we have the port side generator, okay? So what the generator does it generates power for the vessel. So basically, uh, when we're not tied to the shore, so when we're at sea, we always have at least one generator constantly running. That provides power, uh, things like the air conditioning, the water pumps, the, 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 the services. So we've got dishwashers, the washing machines, the dryers, your fridges, your lighting, your battery chargers, and so on and so forth. We have two generators on board. Uh, they're each 70 kilowatts. So normally we only need to run one at a time. However, there are times when we need to run both generators because we're consuming too much power. So when will that happen? Normally when we are anchored in the bay, we're using the stabilizers. The chef is prepping food for the crew and for the guests. If the laundry are using a lots of, um, you know, both the washing machines and the dryers, the air conditioning consumes a lot of power as well. So that's um, the reason we'll run then both generators. So all we've got here underneath the generator, let's close this up. These two white cylinder kind of shape objects here, what they're for, is these are called Raycor filters. So basically, we've got three fuel tanks uh, on board. We've got the port and starboard fuel tank, and then we've got the day tank. Now, the port and starboard fuel tanks are the biggest tanks. They are 15,000 liters each, and the day tank is 5,000 liters. So what happens is the two engines and the two generators consume fuel from the day tank. So what, what would normally happen is we suck the fuel from the either the port or the starboard tank. It goes through a filtration system. So on this particular boat, we have an Alpha Laval. And what's this? It's, it's through a centrifugal force. So it spins the fuel, separating the water and any contamination. From there, it goes into the day tank. When we turn the generator on, the fuel pump will suck the fuel from the day tank through these um raycore filters now these raycores an additional filter they separate water so the water will come to the bottom you can see here we've got a little tap there so we can open that up if we have to check to see if we've got any water inside we also have these wires here you can see what that does that's a little sensor that reads if there is water so we'll get an alarm saying there is water in the raycore filter so the engineer will know to go and check here we have you can see one pump and two pumps. Now what these pumps do, they are the clean oil pump and the dirty oil pump. What does that mean? So when we want to service the generators, we need to remove the old dirty oil and it goes into what we call the dirty oil tank. And so that's from one pump, so it gets pumped into the dirty oil tank. And then we have a clean oil tank, so then the other pump sucks the clean oil from the oil tank into uh, the hose, which will then be put into the, into the generator sump. Okay, here, just further aft, this is the um, electrical box for our stabilizers. Uh, 
Um, some of you that have been following the channel for a while know we changed this electrical box during the season. And actually, the whole thing broke down. We had a technician come in from Italy. We were in Corsica at the time. And um, if you haven't seen that video, actually, I'll put a link right here so you can watch that video after you finish watching this one. That's new. That, that's basically powering the stabilizers. So stabilizers, what they do, we have two fins in the water on the hull of the vessel. And as the boat rock rolls from side to side, the fins flick water, causing a, a water pressure, stabilizing, stabilizing the vessel. Okay, so that's on this side here. We're gonna make our way further forward. So we're gonna make our way around the port engine. These are Caterpillar C32s. They generate around 1600 horsepower each. So a total of 3200 horsepower. Um, Caterpillars are probably better known for like the um, the bulldozers that they build and the you know the, the big um, lifting trucks they have in these big quarries. And as we make our way around, here we have this is the hydraulic power pack which has been built by Niad. Now Niad are our brand of stabilizers. So what I showed you earlier, the electrical box is all the electronic side. This is the power pack. So this is the you can see the motor for the hydraulics. So this is what gives the pressure to to the system. Here you can see we've got a big ventilation. So we always want to kind of maintain a good positive pressure when the engines are running. So they're not, they're not um, suffocating. So these big fans, they pump nice outside air in and then we've got additional fans which pump pumps the air out again. So obviously the air coming in is more than the air going out when the engines are running. So you can see from the exhaust here, this is the, the main exhaust pipe that goes out that goes through underneath the vessel. And then we've got the exhaust, like the main exhaust goes under the vessel and then we've got another exhaust which goes above the water for lower RPM. So we don't get a back pressure. So as we make our way to the other side now, you can see here, these look quite familiar. These are the Raycor filters for the main engines. So we've got three for each and we can choose which ones we want to operate. So normally we kind of use um, two at a time uh, and if they clog up the problem, we can turn those off and use the spare one while the engineer changes the, the, um, the, the two main ones. Further down, you got one, two, three, four. These are the emergency shutoffs for the fuel tanks. Why do we need that? So in case of a fire in the engine room, we can go, we, can't, we, won't, and we can't get in the engine room, we want to shut off the fuel so it doesn't catch fire. So we want to isolate the engine room. The way we do that, we'll get out the engine room and we've got a lever handle just here. And what we do, you can see emergency fuel shut off. This handle, we start pumping it up and down and that will trigger the, um, the four emergency shut off valves to engage. So all shut down, you know, um, making sure no fuel's coming into the engine room. So you can see we've got one, two, three and four. Right, we'll continue <coughs> our way around directly here in front of us these two pumps here are for the fresh water system so this basically keeps the fresh water plumbing on board pressurized um, so we hold 6,000 liters of fresh water on board and this basically just supplies water to you know all the taps uh, the showers washing machines dishwash dishwashers and so on just above that you can see again we've got another blower fan and then just to the right this is the water maker so this processes seawater through what's called um, reverse osmosis and it converts it into fresh water <clears throat> so how does that work so basically it will suck in the seawater and through a very high pressure pump normally around 55 60 bar it will pressure the seawater through a membrane and what it'll do, it will, it will remove, by pushing it through the membrane, it will remove the salts, any kind of contaminations. So what comes out the other side is fresh water. And then all the salts and the, and the, and the contamination is then pumped overboard, that's called brine. So with this particular water maker, we can actually produce up to 250 liters of fresh water every hour. So we're not gonna run short of fresh 
water. So let's get a little look at what it looks like. So this fresh water maker, these are the filters. These are the two membranes, one, two, I was just talking about. And then basically all of that, what happens is when it's making the fresh water, it then takes it straight into the, into the two fresh water tanks. You have two, you've got port side and starboard side, and they hold 3000 liters each. So we'll come back out and we'll make our way around to the other side. And as you can see, like the port side generator, this is our uh, starboard side generator, exactly the same. It's 70 kilowatts. Uh, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, uh, you may have watched the um, refit we did last winter. We completely rebuilt both generators. We rebuilt both engines. All the pumps on board were taken out and either replaced or rebuilt. <clears throat> all the hydraulics was all redone, all new hydraulic piping, fittings and fixtures. And uh, if you haven't watched that, then do browse the channel because it's a lot of interesting um, videos, uh, especially more technical stuff. So if you're interested in that, please do browse the channel. Now these things here, are called uh, the gen clean system so basically through the generator exhaust it comes through here inside here we have six filters so it, it, it um, <clears throat> filters out any you know, the carbon the contamination so the exhaust then goes the atmosphere is a lot cleaner what else do we have here here we have our detectors for so our alarms for any um, fire here we have our engine room camera so this road takes 360 degrees and up and down and also has a zoom. I can control this from the bridge so I can see exactly what's going on. These valves here, these are the transfer valves for the fuel. So I can choose to take suction from the starboard tank or the port tank, and I can choose the delivery to be the starboard tank, the port tank, or the day tank. So you can choose where you want to move your fuel to by choosing the, the valve and turning on the fuel transfer pump. So, you know, a question we get asked quite frequently is the duties of the crew during the winter. So the winter times when the crew uh, get their time off, they get to go home and see their families or travel. And the other thing is, is what we do is the maintenance and the servicing. So as you can imagine, if you build something to this caliber and you put it in the worst, one of the worst possible environments, which is salt water, it's gonna create problems and you need to stay on top of it. So the servicing on board a super yacht is, is just never ending. You're, you're constantly fixing stuff, <clears throat> cleaning, polishing, servicing. So it's a 24, 365 uh, job to um, stay on top of. As always guys, really hope you enjoyed that video. Do click that like button and uh, if you haven't done already, do consider subscribing to the channel and I look forward to seeing you all next video.